Well, so how great a danger is it, do you really think, that Israel could do something to force America's hand, whether in league with Dick Cheney or just with a wink and a nod from him or... Well, you know, I, I think there's a high probability of that. This is not a matter of statistics. This is a matter of, of politics, and it's a political decision. Another thing I've been uh, noticing in the Israeli media, which, which clearly, uh, Scott, you're reading too, is is that uh, Olmert is looking for a way out of his political scandals, where his bribery scandals involving American businessmen. Uh, and, you know, uh, there are a lot of politicians who realize that a nice little military action is a good way to get out of trouble. Well, that's true. It's a time-tested and honored tactic, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Okay, well, um, uh, speaking of uh, Israeli media, I have here uh, former Mossad chief Ephraim Halevi, again from Haaretz, report ex-Mossad chief says strike on Iran could affect us for a 100 years. And, you know, the current Mossad chief, uh, Mayor Dagan, although he's contradicted himself quite a few times, has said at least two or three times publicly that we don't need to have a war now, we can handle this, we have plenty of time, et cetera, like that. Of course, there's other reports that where even the Israeli government is mocking Ahmadinejad and saying, oh, their nuclear program isn't advanced as they like to pretend. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and not only that, them, but also the Israeli foreign minister uh, has, has said a couple times that uh, Iran is really a paper tiger. And the most recent issue of Time magazine, which quoted Halevi, uh, also quoted an unnamed senior uh, Israeli intelligence officer saying the same thing, that, that Iran essentially is a paper tiger. That is, has, uh, what is the, the, the old uh, English kind of story about the, the frog who pumps himself uh, up to be as big as a bull? Uh, you know, this, this is what they're saying, that uh, essentially the, the Iranians are, are not a serious threat. Uh, a lot of people know that. I mean, that's, uh, a lot of people in the U.S. government also know it. But the, the fact is, you know, this is a process that's being driven by politics as much as anything. And that's what the dangerous aspect of it, because Iran is not a threat, uh, at least is not now. And uh, lots of people know that. And yet you keep hearing nothing but war, war, war. Okay, now... Um... This is more kind of long-term uh, strategic and speculation prediction type stuff, but it's and it's some reading between the lines, too. When I uh, see the head of Mossad say, or the former head of Mossad say, this could affect us for 100 years, of course, in uh, Seymour Hersh's most recent article for The New Yorker, he quotes Gates, our Secretary of Defense, saying that if we do this and start a war with Iran, it will start a generational conflict. Our grandchildren will be fighting them generations from now in our streets, etc., like this. This seems to me a recognition that we do not have a real clash of civilizations, but that if we do attack Iran, we will. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a safe bet. I think that uh, one of the scary, the truly scary things about talking about war with Iran is that it would unleash other forces. I think that um, we've actually seen over the last couple of years a decline in, in kind of the jihadi, you know, uh, clash of civilization sense coming from the Islamic side. And I think this has, has declined for a lot of reasons, uh, which would take us forever to get into. But I think that that's definitely been taking place. Uh, Muslims are alienated from this kind of uh, rhetoric and this kind of talk. But if you suddenly attack Iran, those who have been saying that, yes, the United States is out to exterminate all Muslims, they suddenly, their voices become very, very credible. Yeah, this is, and we've known this for years, right, that this is what Osama bin Laden wants. There was even, I thought, video of Ayman al-Zawahiri saying in an interview that, yeah, listen, if we can figure out a way to create a pretext for America to have a war with Iran, that would be so much the better, to further bleed America dry and destroy those evil dog Ayatollah mad mullahs that we hate so much, he said. That's right, yeah, because there you, know, there you would have uh, the two great enemies of, of al-Qaeda fighting each other. Wow, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's not the neocons who are pulling Bush's strings, it's al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden's writing his script. <laughs> it almost seems that way, doesn't it? But unfortunately, I keep hearing the voice of Bill Crystal on Sunday mornings, and uh, so. Oh, I don't know happens. how you put yourself through it. I don't watch. I just can't. <laughs> I turn him off pretty quickly, but you know, I like I like to see that Cheshire Cat grin that he has, and as, as he as he describes yet another war that we have to fight. So, uh, uh, you know, the neocons are still very present. All you have to do is, literally is turn on the television. 
And these people do want war, and they think war is the solution. Listen to John Bolton, lady, for God's sakes. It's unbelievable. You know, he's saying from his whatever bully pulpit he still has that Israel should attack uh, the United States with the full support of, of the United States. And, uh, you know, this is insanity. Yeah, it is insanity. Well, you mean uh, attack Iran. Uh, Iran, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But same difference, I mean, because we are talking about uh, something that would be very, uh, I guess, self-sacrificial, at least if you count the entire American people, rather than the war party that will benefit their own way. Yeah, well, the, there is absolutely no plus side on this for the American people. You know, oil prices would skyrocket, and just to, that's just for starters. You'd have a completion of the process where the United States would, would be really turning into a military economy, where the only part of the economy that functions is the military. And that's scary. And, and you know, if you, if you project back and you, you think of what the Founding Fathers, if they could be here now and see this, uh, what they would think, oh, my God. Yeah, I saw a political cartoon that was a new energy resource. We just hook up the, uh, the wire set up to the Founding Fathers so that they can spin in their graves and generate electricity to run <laughs> yes. our cities. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a certain group of... Salafist, Wahhabi, Sunni, jihadist types called Jundullah, who seem to be doing very well these days from all the headlines I'm reading, Phil. In, in terms of what? In terms of the... Uh, well, they, they just murdered two more of the cops that they had kidnapped in Iran. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously this is one of the groups that if you read between the lines in, in Seymour Hersh's uh, account of what's going on, you would. Uh, this is one of the groups that's being supported. And uh, there's also an interesting story, which, I, which you, uh, I think was on anti-war, from Israeli sources, about an explosion of a munitions caravan in, in Tehran, which uh, is, is extremely mysterious. And, and there is some suspicion that it might have been carried out by the United States or Britain or by the Israelis. Uh, who the players are, is no, nobody's quite clear. But if this is true, this is a, a, a serious escalation of this kind of support of guerrilla warfare, or as the the agency would call it, covert action uh, inside Iran, because these are really acts of war. Well, you know, uh, when I talked to Hirsch, and I only had just a few minutes with him, but he seemed to kind of back away from the assertion that American money was actually paying for terrorist groups to commit violent acts, although that sure seemed to be uh, at least my interpretation of uh, Andrew Coburn's coverage of the same uh, presidential finding there authorizing uh, some sort of covert activity in Iran. What's your take on it? Well, my take would be, I, you know, I've been on the inside on this kind of stuff, and, you know, you support groups that have weapons, and they go in and they do things, then, all right, where do you draw the line in terms of, you know, are you really supporting them or really not supporting them? Of course you're supporting them. Yeah. Well, so there is no other purpose for that, is there, other than to get the Iranians to finally do something stupid, or what? Well... You know, I wish it were that simple. The, the, the thing is, certainly if this, if this nonsense continues, either the United States or the Iranians or the Israelis are going to, somebody's going to do something really stupid. And that's the danger here. I mean, you're, you're basically, you're meddling in, in situations where you don't have to meddle, where there, uh, particularly in terms of the, the so-called threat posed by Iran, there are lots and lots of ways to deal with that, starting with diplomacy and, and working with other incentives. And uh, the fact that we are, are constantly going for this quick kill kind of option, supporting groups that are there to overthrow the regime or to destabilize it and so on and so forth, I mean, this kind of stuff is playing with fire. Well, and see, that's really the thing, like Justin Armando has been writing for years, that we're simply a border incident away, a Gulf of Tonkin incident away, explosion inside Iran away from some sort of pretext that will be good enough. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. You know, if you want a war, there are a hundred ways to start it. And uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who want a war on, on both sides. And um, this, is, um, this is the situation we've gotten ourselves into. It's reassuring when you hear Mullen and you hear Gates saying, look, we want to negotiate a solution. We don't want a military option. It's not in our interest to do this right at the present time. But until the president says that, <laughs> it's not policy. And I'm waiting to hear it from George Bush. Of course, the grammar would be awful and probably the syntax. But uh, I still would like to hear him say it in his own words that uh, that this is off the table and that we really want to talk to these people to resolve our problems.